All right, guys, so I want to start this video off with a little story. And this story is going to take place in 2004 in South Florida. So down in Southeast Florida in Fort Lauderdale, Miami, they used to have these cruise ships where you could actually gamble in international waters. Now, I should say I am not a gambler. I cannot stand to lose hard-earned money. But once in a while, we would do this with, with my family or friends just for fun and uh, have a good time and expect to lose money. So one time we went out on the ship and we were actually coming back into the port and we we're about to dock. And this particular time, I remember I had lost money. I had definitely lost a couple hundred dollars. So I was walking out of the ship and I looked down on the ground and luck would have it that there was a hundred dollar bill on the ground. So naturally I picked the hundred dollar bill up and I thought right away, well, this mitigates some of my loss for the day. Kind of made me feel a little better about the overall trip. Anyway, the question is, if I'm given a hundred bucks, in addition to what I receive typically, how much of this money will I spend? So in economics, we have something known as the marginal propensity to consume. The margin is the units of currency, in this case, $100. The propensity means the likelihood and consume would be to spend the money. So what is the likelihood that I will spend a fraction, if not all of this money? So imagine that out of this $100, I spend 50 and I save 50. My marginal propensity to consume would be half of the dollars or 0.5 of the $100. Again, what is the likelihood that I will spend a fraction of this money? In this case, my MPC or the marginal propensity to consume would be 0.5. So the marginal propensity to consume is the percentage or fraction of the income that I will spend rather than save. And likewise, the marginal propensity to save would be the percentage or fraction of the income that I save versus spend. So we have the MPC and the MPS, which both give us an indication of our spending behavior. If a household spends 75% of the $100, then the MPC is 0.75, and the MPS would be 0.25. If the household spends 50% of the $100, they would have an MPC of 0.5 and an MPS of 0.5. MPC of 0.25, MPS of 0.75. Now, when the government is trying to determine whether they will cut taxes or they will increase spending, one of the things that they analyze or consider is the multiplier effect. The multiplier effect is the idea that when money is provided to consumers or government spends money, that money is spent many times over. And so the money actually creates a shift in aggregate demand. It will shift multiple times as a result of this multiplier effect. So for instance, when this young lady spends $200 to get her car fixed, that is not the only transaction that will occur as a result of this $200 of spending. This mechanic is gonna turn around and pay their employees, and then those employees are gonna turn around and spend that money on things that they wanna buy, like clothing or groceries, whatever that may be. So that money is going to multiply many times over. That again is called the multiplier effect. All right, so recall in a previous video, we talked about how the government has two options to either expand or contract the economy. Remember that they can increase spending or cut taxes and give consumers and businesses money to spend. If they increase spending, the government, the G component, is automatically activated on things like, let's say, a government contract with Lockheed Martin for military goods. So we know that that money is going to be spent many times over as Lockheed Martin pays their employees, their employees buy stuff, and then so on and so forth. So again, the government can spend money, and that is an automatic injection of cash into the economy and the G component of aggregate demand. The other option they have is they can cut taxes and give consumers and businesses money to spend. So which option is better? Well, we have to think about what is it that will happen immediately and subsequent to the spending or tax cuts. If the government spends $10 billion on a contract with Lockheed Martin, then that G component is automatically triggered into aggregate demand. If the government cuts taxes on consumers or businesses, then they have to rely upon the consumers and or businesses to actually spend the money. And we know that maybe some people are not gonna spend every penny they receive in a tax cut. It is likely that they'll spend a lot of it, but it just depends on the marginal propensity to consume. But the disadvantage, I guess you could say, with the government cutting taxes is that they then rely upon the consumer to spend the money or the business to spend the money. And they may not. They may not spend it all. Whereas if they actually spend the money in terms of government spending, that money has been activated in the economy. 
So we have a multiplier formula, which will tell us which one of these decisions has more of an impact on the economy. The multiplier effect is equal to 1 over 1 minus the MPC, or 1 over MPS. Both of those figures will be the same. So if the MPC is 0.75, we want to know what the spending multiplier is. We would take 1 over 1 minus 0.75, or 1 over 0.25, which would give us a figure of 4. That means that any spending done by the government will multiply four times its original amount. For instance, if the government spends $20 billion on some contract with Boeing, then that money is going to multiply four times its original amount and affect aggregate demand in that way. So the $20 billion would actually multiply to $80 billion of aggregate demand or an increase in spending in the economy. Therefore, if the MPC is 0.5, then our multiplier would be 2. If the MPC is 0 0.75, 4. 0.9, 10. So you can see as consumers spend more money, that money then multiplies more times. Now the tax multiplier formula is a little different. We take the MPC over the MPS. So if we have an MPC of 0.75, we would put that over 0.25 and that would give us 3. What you can actually notice about the tax multiplier is it is always one less than the spending multiplier. So what I like to say is if you can figure out the government spending multiplier, then you can always figure out the tax multiplier. So if the government spending multiplier is 4, the tax multiplier will be 3. It is always one less. And again, the tax multiplier is a result of government cutting taxes on consumers and those consumers going to spend a portion of that money. For instance, if the government tax cut is $20 billion, it will multiply three times its original amount to $60 billion. And you might have noticed that that is less than the government spending multiplier. So the government spending multiplier is always going to be a little bit bigger because the multiplier is always greater by 1. The government cannot predict what people do with their tax cut. But when they spend money, that money has been spent 100% at least one time. In this example, we're going to be looking at the marginal propensity to consume. Again, if you receive $100 and spend 10, you have a 0.1 marginal propensity to consume. If you spend 25 out of 100, you have a 0.25 MPC, 0.5, 50 out of 100, a 0.8, 80 out of 100, and a 1, 100 out of 100. So again, this is to determine the MPC or the marginal propensity to consume. On this slide, we're going to look at the MPC and determine the spending multiplier as well as the tax multiplier based on the MPC. To determine the spending multiplier, we do 1 over the MPS. 1 over the MPS would be 1 over 0.1, which gave me 10. To determine the tax multiplier, I take the MPC over the MPS, which would give me 0.9 over 0.1, or 9. And again, notice here that the tax multiplier is less than the spending multiplier by 1. If the MPC is 0.8, I would go 1 over 0.2, which give me 5, or 0.8 over 0.2, which give me 4 for the tax multiplier. The tax multiplier is always 1 less than the spending multiplier. 0.5, I would say 1 over 0.5, and then just as before, the tax multiplier is 1 less than the spending multiplier. And as a reminder, the government, if they reduce the taxes, must rely upon the consumers and the businesses to spend the money, and they may not spend all of it. Okay, let's go through this now. What would the MPC be if an individual received $100 and spent $50? We take the spending as a fraction of the new income, and that would give us 0.5. The MPS would be 0.5. To find the spending multiplier, we take 1 over 0.5, which is 2, and the tax multiplier is always 1 less than the spending multiplier. What would the MPC be if an individual received $100 and spent 80? Well, if they're spending 80 over 100, that means they're spending 80% of that $100 received. The MPS would be the remaining 0.2. And again, we take the 1 over the 0.2, which gives us 5. The tax multiplier is always 1 less. Now we're going to assume an MPC of 0.5. And the question is, how much will an initial increase of $5 billion in government spending increase the nation's aggregate demand? So to solve this, you need to take 1 over the MPS, which in this case is 0.5, and that's going to give me 2. Then I take the 2 and multiply it by the 5, which gives me $10 billion, which means if the government spends $5 billion, it will multiply to a $10 billion increase in aggregate demand. What about at $3 billion? Well, $3 billion times 2 equals $6 billion. Therefore, if they spend $3 billion, it will multiply to $6 billion in the economy overall. So this is a look at the multiplier effect the government spending multiplier, or the tax multiplier that we need to know for this course. So thank you for watching, 
And in the next video, we'll be talking about how to fill the gap of an inflationary gap or how to close a gap of a contractionary gap using the multiplier effects.